In this video, I'm going to be guiding you through chapter 1.1 through to chapter 1.4 for IGCSE Economics for the Cambridge Syllabus 0455. So the nature of the economic problem. The basic economic problems we have today is that we have unlimited wants that exceeds our world's finite resources. So these involve consumers as they are the consumer of goods and services, workers or employees as they supply their time and effort at businesses or firms, firms as they are producer of goods and services, and lastly, the government as they are producer of public goods and services within the economy. So the question is, what is the concept of scarcity? This is when there's an unlimited demand for goods and services by consumers, as wants are unlimited, but at the same time, the Earth's resources are scarce. So the result of this is that wants will always continue to outpace supply due to unlimited wants. So simply put, scarcity in resources is when unlimited demand meets limited supply. In the case for consumers, students can only study a limited amount of subjects at school as they cannot study everything. Families can only choose one restaurant to eat at for a meal at a specific time of the day or whether it's to buy an Apple or a Samsung phone. In the case for workers, employees need to choose between different jobs that they want to work for or to either refine their skills further or choose employment or to negotiate a higher wage or to supply their time as labour or they can trade their additional free time to take on multiple jobs. In the case for firms, firms need to decide how many workers or employees are required. They need to know how many machines and factories are required for their business operations and lastly how many raw materials that are required for the operations for the business. In the case for governments, governments will need to spend their scarce resources on hospitals, education, parks, libraries, transportation and other public goods. Firms need to decide on allocating their scarce resources by asking the following three questions. What do we produce? as resources are limited, such as money, labour and materials. So firms will need to decide what to make, as choosing one thing means giving up something else. So the question is, what are their priorities? The next question is how to produce it. So what is the best way to make goods and services that people want? And also, how are they going to mix the factors of production used to ensure that it is efficient and able to satisfy the market's wants? And lastly, who to produce for? Who is going to be the buyer of these products? How much should we charge? And a big question is, should healthcare be free? As everybody on the planet requires healthcare, so shouldn't it be free? Moving on to economic goods and free goods. So an economic good is a product which requires resources to produce. This means that an economic good has utilised its factors of production for it to be made. So therefore an opportunity cost has been involved. A free good, on the other hand, does not require any resources to make. These are usually the natural gifts that the earth has got to offer, such as sunshine, water and oxygen. Chapter 1.2 Factors of Production So a factor of production is the economic resources of land, labour, capital and enterprise and this is required for the production of any good or service and the resources are as follows. So capital are goods used to produce other goods and services so it's a manufactured good that makes another good, also known as a producer good. And some examples include offices, factories, machines, railways and tools. 
and a more updated example would be a robot working in the Amazon Fulfillment Center stacking shelves. The rewards for capital is interest, as financial institutions or the owners of capital, such as banks, are rewarded the interest charged. This is because lending involves risks. Subsequently, the payment received from the company that the entrepreneur is operating will need to exceed the interest paid back to the banks. The next one is enterprise. This is the CEO or the leader of the company and they are risk bearing and they are the key decision makers. These people will have the willingness and the ability to make these risks and these decisions. And if done properly and successfully, they'll be greatly rewarded for it. They are the ones that organize factors of production and they decide what is produced, how it's produced and for who. So what are the rewards for enterprise? Simply put, profit. They have a big financial return if successful with the risk that they take. They see it as an investment and running an organization. The next factor of production is land. This is the gift of nature available for production. Some examples include farms require land to grow crops. Offices and factories also need land to be built on. Natural resources will be used for the production of goods, such as oil, wood from the rainforest, and water from the sea. And the reward for the land is rent. So the users of the land will always have to pay rent and the landowners will receive this as rental income. And the rental income is to compensate landowners for their scarce resource and the profits made using this land will need to exceed the cost of rent. Our next factor of production is labor. This is the human effort used in producing goods and services. Labor is all human effort. This includes mental and physical effort. And some examples are road sweepers, bankers, teachers, etc, etc. And the rewards for labor is salaries. So these salaries or wages are paid to workers. And this is an exchange for their time and resources for the production of goods and services. This is an exchange for their value in productivity. So moving on to the quantity and quality of the factors of production. In order to increase the quantity of CEOs or entrepreneurs in the economy, they need to lower the taxes for firms to give them an incentive to make more profits. Moreover, they can reduce the government regulations so it's easier to do business. And in order to increase the quality of enterprise, they should have some good education systems and access to universities and schools in order for these future entrepreneurs to come to fruition. In the case for land, the quality depends on the soil type, how fertile it is, and the weather conditions within the country. In terms of quantity, it can be increased by land reclamation, but unfortunately, these days, the quantity of rainforests are currently declining due to deforestation. And for capital, it really depends on how much investments are made over a period of time. As new machines run way more efficiently compared to the old, as technology increases, the quality and quantity of goods produced are increased. And when it comes to labor, access to education, training, higher concentration levels at work from motivation, having the ability to work with complex machinery, and also access to healthcare will increase the quantity and quality of labor. Moving on to chapter 1.3, Opportunity Cost. Opportunity cost is the next best alternative for gone. This is the consideration for the alternatives that is presented in front of you. These are the cost of decisions in terms of the best alternatives presented. And decision makers, such as entrepreneurs, will choose the option that gives them the greatest benefits. So in our example, profits. Let's see how opportunity cost affects different decision makers. 
So for customers, they need to decide what they're going to buy. I know it sounds like a first world problem, but that is the truth. So what they do is they give up the benefits of purchasing another product. So for instance, would you go to McDonald's tonight or Burger King? You simply cannot go to both as you will be full from one. For workers, they need to choose which business that they would like to work for. So they need to sacrifice the alternative company. Or whether it's specializing in a particular profession, which means that they give up the opportunity to pursue other jobs. For example, if you spent 10 years of your life specializing in being a neurosurgeon, this was at the cost of being a chartered accountant. For producers, they need to choose between competing business opportunities. So for example, Tesla will need to decide how best to allocate its resources, such as developing self-driving technology or battery technology, or even more up-to-date, their robot technology. And in the case for governments, the opportunity cost is what to spend in the public sector. So whether it's public schools, hospitals, libraries, infrastructures, they will need to make sacrifices on what they are spending on in order to meet the government objectives. Moving on to production possibility curves. At point A, the country is dedicating 100% of its resources into making consumer goods and zero for capital goods. And at point B, the country is dedicating 100% of its resources into capital goods and zero for consumer goods. At point C, the country is making 50 consumer goods and 5 capital goods. At point C, it makes 30 consumer goods and 10 capital goods. Point E illustrates an inefficient use of resources within the country. And point F is beyond the capacity of the economy. Moving on to the movement along the production possibility curve. So when an economy is operating on the curve itself, this illustrates that all resources are deployed efficiently in the factors of production. And moving from point A to point B represents an opportunity cost. In order for an economy to move from A to B, it needs to sacrifice some consumer goods in order to make more capital goods. Now moving on to the shifts of a PPC. They can be an outward shift of the curve, shifting it to the right from PPC1 to PPC2. This can be the quality of factors of production such as an improvement of education, training, and technological breakthroughs in the long run. Quantity of factors of production can also be increased too, such as a discovery of natural resources, like an oil reserve, for example. The PPC curve can also shift inwards to the left from PPC1 to PPC2. This is due to a fall in the quality of factors of production such as less spending on healthcare, education, and other infrastructure spending. Moreover, the quantity of factors of production can be affected, such as natural disasters damaging key infrastructure within the country. I hope that helped. I hope you guys have a good day. Bye-bye.